welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters. The old heads talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain. We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the Masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to the Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such sites to show you. This zombie treasure of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me, as always, is the also host, the skipper to my Gilligan, Winter Trash Monk the <laughs> Third. <laughs> what was that, man? I don't know, man. Some kind of was like some kind of Norwal mating call or something, man. Monker, yeah, monkey. Okay, monker. What's up, everybody? This is Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk, I, 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 Trash Monk, I, I. That's him. I'm coming at you in the bunker. Roommate's not here. I got the door open. I got a breeze going. Oh no, boxes of briefs, my man. They call <laughs> me the breeze. You know who sings that song? Um, I don't know why it sounds like Season of the Witch. No, it's uh, Leonard Skinner. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't subscribe to the Leonard Skinner uh, yeah. information stuff. <laughs> not, not after the words he spoke. Yeah, not hope Neil the... Young will remember. Southern man don't need him around anyhow. Why don't you need him around anyhow? I don't know. See, see. In the Birmingham, the they love the governor. Why do they love the governor? Boo, blue. <laughs> would you think like Leonard Skinner would buy you a blizzard if you saw him at a Dairy Queen? Oh or, yeah. You Winter Trash Monk the Thizzard? Or? Oh yeah, because I go. I love all your music. <laughs> Damn, you're I like, just won't look at you. You're the one good one here. <laughs> wow, that's probably how it go down too. You know, you guys aren't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mister Skinner. And thank you for this You're one dollar blizzard. I'm Rochester. Now that now that's a deep cut for even me to say. So I have to explain what I meant by I'm Rochester. Rochester is a character from the Jack Benny show in the 1930s. <laughs> he was the back black butler for this character. <laughs> Wowzers, man! Yeah, that's that's probably our deepest pull yet, dude. Mm-hmm. You're you're going back to the. Unless I just do a Nosferatu pull, but I don't have the been, energy. This has been Deep Cuts with Winter. You hear that? We're stepping it up. Winter has been practicing every day. Turn it up. I messed up that part. I was about you to get, get it. Listen. I was about to get it. Yeah. What you been doing with your week, bro, besides being a guitarist? Uh, learning that rip. <laughs> <laughs> it was crispy, though. Uh, I, I've been watching a few shows. I'm on the third to last season of West Wing. I'm on the season now where Aaron Sorkin left for... Oh, you can't see what my hands... I was doing a cocaine reference. Wow. Uh, reasons. He left for reasons. Well, actually, I don't know if it was cocaine. I, I cocaine. think it was... Uh, <laughs> I would think it was the drink. It was the old booze dog? I don't know. Liquid... I, I love Aaron Sorkin. I, I, like, yeah. I like his writing. Well, you know, that liquid courage, you know. They say drinking okay. synonymous with being a writer, so, you know, balances uh, out. <laughs> There's only certain people that say that, and it's the people that the are people drinking. The people who are already. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's the alcoholics. <laughs> Dude. Like, certain, it, certain drugs make you a better musician, says the musician doing the certain drugs. <laughs> yeah, I swear, drug Stephen King is way better than clean Stephen King. Have you seen Monkey Shine? Wait, not, not Monkey Shine. That's not Stephen King. Uh, so maximum yeah. Overdrive is the maximum is the famous overdrive. one, yes, where yes. he was just gone. <laughs> that movie, that movie is because he directed that, didn't he? he, he like, I don't think so, man. Maximum Overdrive. Mm-hmm. Only reason Maximum Overdrive is cool is because the giant truck has a Green Goblin face, which is Spider Man villain. <laughs> That's the only reason I like that. Maxi- maximum Overdrive, the one where there's like wrestling semi truck drivers. 
arm wrestling semi truck. Dr- I think so. Yeah, they're stuck. There, it's a yeah. siege movie where all like the technology kind of starts going crazy and killing people. Yeah, and it's like on screen. I'm like, thinking of a murder. different movie. That's the one where the baseball team gets like devoured by like a, a lawnmower or something crazy like that. Yeah, and uh, y- y- uh, Yarley Smith from Simpsons fame is in that movie. The voice of Lisa Simpson. It's one of her first roles, I think. She was super young. She was like a teenager, I think, in Maximum Overdrive. That movie rules. Okay, what's your favorite non... What's your favorite underrated Stephen King film? What did you say? Oh. None of the big ones, but the ones that people don't remember, like the underrated ones. Or the ones you that say people the, may not like. Would you say The Stand is a big one? That is a... Uh, you talk about the TV, the TV yeah. movie? Yeah. Now people don't remember it. I think people kind of remember the Stan TV series. Randall Flag. Randall Flag <laughs> rules, by the way. Actually, okay, that's a uh, badass I, name. I remember that movie, um, just because we had a, a copy recorded on a VHS back when people would record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Movies, and it, I just remember like there was a whole section of the movie that I didn't even realize was a part of it because the tape ran. <laughs> Like nice. cut out. So See. when I got the DVD version, I'm like, wait a minute, are these like deleted scenes? These deleted scenes? Is this the extended cut? And then my like my mom made me always do like M O O N. That spells move. Wow. See, Stephen King and Lightning. That's a that's a podcast right there. Top ten Stephen King movies. And then cut bigger. to that actor in Oz playing like a racist cop. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yikes so have the mighty have fallen dude uh just to shoot out minds it's, it's always it's a tie between night flyer and graveyard shift are my favorite stephen king adaptations oh. or 1408 was 14 1408 is stephen king yeah 1408 the short story of his yeah i love 1408 with uh jo- john, john cusack, cusack. And, yeah. and sam jackson I yeah. think that's my favorite because I love how that. I'm tired of me. these one fours on these oh eight. <laughs> that's an evil effing room. Yeah, that movie's super cool. Yo, yeah. What else you do, man? I'm trying to think of other Stephen King. I watched other uh, stuff. Golden Years. <laughs> Golden Years. Golden. Isn't years. that that's the that's one right where the guy has green eyes? Yeah. What was that? Was that Amazing Stories? I don't remember. I don't know, man. It was like uh, there were so many like Twilight Zone ripoffs, like in the early late eighties, early nineties. Nah, this is <laughs> this was a whole movie with the green eyes. You talk about Needful Things? No, Golden Years, Stephen King. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know why, but that song is attached to it. When so an aging janitor about. is when an aging janitor is accidentally mm. exposed to exotic chemicals in a lab mm. explosion, he undergoes an extraordinary change. It's a process the government will do anything to learn more about. No matter who has to die in the process. Starring Keith Sabakia <laughs> and Felicity. H- oh, Felicity Huffman. Oh, how? <laughs> As Terry Spann, Ed yeah. Lauder, and Bill Raymond. I don't know why they reminded me of the beginning of the Incredible Hulk TV show with Bill Bixby died. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm looking at a lot of these, actually. I, I forgot about the Tommy Knockers, Storm of the Century. Storm of the Century. Uh, Rose Red. Was Rose, Rose Red? One Red. Of yeah. Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. I would love I to love watch that, that again. I would love to do a no, review on Salem's it. Lot. <laughs> No, I actually I hate it. Garbage. <laughs> That's for one person. Garbage. <laughs> Man. Oh yeah. Um, Salem Slot. Uh, Graveyard Shift. Of course, Night Flyer. Night Flyer is the coolest because Dracula's in it for no reason, and, and he drives a Cessna. You know, he flies a Cessna, and Miguel Ferreira chases him from uh, airport to airport. It's super <laughs> cool. It's the best. Yeah, man. You playing the Virginia games? I'm I'm playing Legend of Runeterra still. That's a fun little uh, game. A little nugget. A little, a little, game. A little chicky nuggy dog. Yeah, I updated Call of Duty. I'm gonna play a little bit of that, but I I didn't have too much time, you know, to play to really play a game. I feel you. Nothing that you could really wrap your brain yeah. around. Yep. 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 Uh what I do? I don't know. Still playing Borderlands Tress. 
um, doing some end game stuff, started up a new class working on my siren currently downloading the final fantasy seven demo. Cause I want to play that and get hands on with that. Talk mm-hmm. about, we talked about last week, uh, watched, I watched all of season two of, of alter carbon. And I want to talk about that for a split second. Yeah. I want to talk about a show that I watched. Oh, then why don't you do that first? Okay. So, uh, I was, I, my friend didn't pay for Netflix, uh, this month yet. So I had to find something else to watch. And then I got a notification that Hunter hunters was out on Amazon. Oh yeah. The Al Pacino thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, I have mixed feelings about the show. Mm-hmm. Talk have you watched it. a couple episodes? I've only you... seen the trailers, and I have a gist of what the what the premise is. Okay. Well, the trailers don't reveal this other side of the show, but and I must be I I must be open because I've gotten on other people's reviewer other reviewers' cases about only seeing a couple of episodes and then saying something, but say, making it sound like they've seen it all. Uh-huh. I've only seen the first three or four episodes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, I, this is the f- first time that I've gotten uncomfortable with a certain subject matter. Is it because Semitism? No, no, it is, um, the, the way I can describe it, if I could steal what someone else has said about it, it's kind of, the show's kind of bipolar in the uh... instance, the first 10 minutes might be a flashback to a very horrific Holocaust scene. Uh, yeah. And then it will cut to like a back in the 19th, will go into the present for the show, which is 1970s. And it will like introduce everyone like they're like an exploitation film character. Yeah. And then it will be like campy type. And then it will go back to Holocaust. Is it, <laughs> is it then, graphic? Not graphic, not as graphic as you would think. No. Okay. But there's a lot of. I mean, you're you're watching Holocaust stuff, and yeah. then it's going like, "Well, we're gonna get these Nazis." That type it of just, thing. It leaves it is giving you two different tastes. It's yeah. It's putting it's salt like, in your sugar, right? Right. It's like mm-hmm. if it's trying to mix the like feelings that you would get from watching The Pianist or The Book Thief. And putting in Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't. It's like it doesn't mix well. It and it, mm-hmm. and there there is some like like while watching, I was going, they they're not using actual Holocaust stories; they're making up their own, and then that that opens up a whole new can of worms of like historical uh, accuracy. Or not, not just like historical accuracy is one thing that's correct. But it's also kind of like, um, what gives you the right <laughs> of artistic license? Like, for instance, in the f- what in the first episode, they talk about an experience that they had at a Holocaust camp where a chess player who was Jewish had to play chess with real human beings with the Holocaust camp leader, and when the pieces would take each other, they had to c- uh, sl- cut each other's throats. So Jeez. actual Jewish pieces. Uh, people Jewish people playing chess pieces on the board, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and I'm like, okay, that never happened. And then I went online. It's like, well, I believe the Holocaust Museum has an issue about this, um, maybe being used as uh, like evidence like, to disprove the Holocaust, which I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah, because if they're That's gonna disprove it, they've got enough. <laughs> they're gonna uh, not to say they have enough. They they're gonna they're gonna find other ways. Because mm. if you're already going to jump the the le- the jump into the pool of denial, you, you there's other things that that people in that pool go to, which are they're wrong for doing it, but that they're, they're not going to go. And this show from 2020 Hunters shows a fictitious thing that happened in, during the Holocaust. Yeah, it's anyway. kind of it's kind of like what Quentin Tarantino's been doing yes. lately. Where yeah. he's playing time traveler, you know what I mean? Uh, That's like in, a, yeah, like in Inglorious Bastards, mind you. They spoilers. Uh, they actually kill Hitler. <laughs> you know, they they right. they murder him in a brutal fashion. But of course, reason, it's it's yeah. fictitious, but right. You know, and also there's some stuff in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that 
plays with very serious uh, Charles Man- uh, Charles Manson stuff, you know, and it's like it's like he's using these real people as kind of like toys, you know. It's like, and now they kiss, <laughs> you know. It's like what? Right, but there's a part history. of me, there's a part of me that go that doesn't mind um, it. All that, that doesn't mind it for the particular things because it's keeping the tone of the entire film. It's but, like it's yeah. not. It's not hopping around of going this and or, you know what I mean? But, like, but, uh, then, but then it's bipolar though, right? Like, you can't go from kick-ass action to like you can't, like you said, you can't go from Schindler's List to Commando, but and, you, and then but expect not to be jarred, you know? But when you're watching Quentin Tarantino movies, it's like it's not. I don't see it as bipolar. I'm just saying nah. you're watching the creation of Tarantino. Nah, because he's he's a art he's a he's a brilliant madman when it comes to that. It usually right. works just fine, you know. But then, so if Quentin Tarantino attached his name to this show, maybe that would have changed my my mind. But for now, there's weird, right? Like there's a scene that I paused at where these kids in the seventies are smoking pot and then they start dancing, like uh, not even not. Fever, yeah, and then they're all having a good time, and then and then they he sees like uh like in his mind his, the his uh, grandmother who was a Holocaust survivor, uh in the like often in the docks type thing. Like I don't. Did, did you ever <laughs> watch uh, Umbrella Umbrella Academy? Yes. Um, remember the character Klaus that was the spirit talker? Uh huh. Who then we found out could freaking time travel for some reason like he was ridiculously powerful and he ended up time traveling back to like the vietnam war yes and lived a whole life like he he survived the war and found a lover and all that crazy stuff and then he just got souped right back (laughs) to the present time like nothing happened like that kind of makes me think like that like going back to these actual historical events and saying this character was there (laughs) you know and then making things up, you know, it's nothing yeah. historically accurate. And then they pull it back. Where if it tells an interesting story, so be it. But I think there needs to be a daft hand when it comes to going back in time. Because if you think about daft. it, you know, doft hand, you know, all of it's kind of all those old stories of war stories, like Saving Private Ryan is mm-hmm. based off of historical events, right? Right. But I like, and I. <laughs> I don't know. It just it just seems weird because even even with Saving Private Ryan and like movie and, and again in Glorious Bastards, I don't get uncomfortable. But it, it's uh, it does this one. There's there's just several moments of like that guy just made like a a dick joke and like thirty yeah. seconds before there was like a Holocaust talk. Yeah, a Holocaust situation that makes you yeah. uncomfortable and sad, mm-hmm. you know, and then. Oh, yeah, but in the Dick premise Parker. is so good. And the premise is so good. And I'm still watching it because because it's just like it's it's interesting to me. But it could just be like I'm early just, episodes. Oh, Remember, man. Like I didn't like the boys when it first started. Like the boys mm-hmm. first three episodes I was not a fan of. I thought it was raunchy and I was trying yeah. it was try hard. Back but it balanced out. Episode. Yeah, hmm? the boys are back in town after the boys know. are back in town. Actually, they just wrapped. They just wrapped um, season two, so I'm very excited right. for that. Um, yeah, so I, I'll, people have been asking me like, "Hey, have you watched Hunters?" And I'm just like, "Nah, I just wrapped up Altered Carbon." So I, I do plan on checking out a couple episodes of Hunters, so I can have some kind of opinion next week. So mm-hmm. that's definitely on the docket for me. Um, yeah, did you have any other thoughts on that winner before I talk? No, about... I'm uh, I'm done. Tell me about Altered Carbon. So you watched the first season, right? Yes. Yes. So the first season I really liked because it played with certain themes of of man versus you know the human body versus the human soul. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Lifetime spanning generations and hundreds of years had kind of a cool crime noir kind of uh, Blade Runner kind of yeah. vibe to it uh sexuality and nudity not used for expo- ex uh, exploitive purposes and that it, bums you out no nah, and it was cool oh. it was actually cool because there was parts and scenes where 
you stop seeing it for like, ooh, ooh, it's a naked person, right? right. Um, you start seeing it as the body is just meat after a while, like as a means to an end. And that's what they kind of drill into you with that series. I thought it was really, really fascinating. Almost reminds me like Kill the Kill, how it's like once you get past the giggles of seeing a naked body on screen, and then you start realizing like that body doesn't matter in 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 the in the shadow of immortality. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really made you think, and I really thought the first season was very cerebral. Fast forward to season two of Ultra Carbon. Uh, Anthony Mackie is now playing the main character, uh, new showrunner, and you can feel it, man. You can feel that it's a new showrunner because a lot of that edge is completely gone. Um, there's very little to no nudity in this. In the they clean it up, they clean everything up, even down to the cuss words. It's all really PG thirteen for like eight <laughs> episodes, which is not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. It just takes away from the spirit and the intention of the first season uh, a little bit um, due to a shift in subject matter. Uh, there are certain characters that really, really stand out and have amazing story arcs. But for the most part, it just feels a bit watered down from the first season. Um, and I just marathoned it. I was just like, I just want to watch it from head to toe. Um, Anthony Mackie does, an ama- uh, does a better job than I want to say uh, Kinnaman did with... Um, with uh, Kovach, with Takeshi Kovach, I think he's a better actor, but yeah. he just didn't have as much to do. I was almost wish that their roles were flipped and Mackie was in the first season with all that character development and, and weight, whereas the character in this season kind of feels like an action hero. You know what I mean? A lot of his development kind of goes out the window, in my humble opinion. There's new, there are new villains and new characters. It almost feels like American Horror Story, but reversed. Oh. You know, where you know American Boom. Horror Story Boom. is the same actors. I love that theme, by Boom. the way. Boom. Uh, and it's the same actors playing different roles, right? Yeah. But now it's the same roles with different actors. <laughs> so there's returning <laughs> characters in new quote unquote sleeves. That, yeah. But but they're like, oh yeah, he's this guy from the first season. Like he doesn't look like that guy. You, you get that weird facial familiarity. It even takes a second for Anthony Mackie to grow on you as the new main character because you're used to the other guy, right? So, it's really... But that's part of the charm of the show Mm -hmm. is that they could get a new leading man every season. Well, I don't see the difference between the two. Well, me neither. Me neither. There's no difference (laughs) whatsoever. How dare I? Yeah. No difference. It's 2020, 2020, Mike. No difference whatsoever. They're both equal. Their content in their character. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't see what I'm <laughs> I know what you're doing. And I'm, and I'm staring right into it, you bastard. That being said, I would recommend you check it out to Winner. If you, I'm curious to see what your opinion of it would be. Because uh-huh. uh, they do, just because I'm just here, curious to see if you see it in my same lens as just a diet version of the first season. Um, but I'm just interested in your take. The action scenes were better in the first season. In my opinion, that it seemed like the production value was higher, uh, but I'm just curious to see what you would say. So I'll, let's switch. I'll start watching Hunters. You can start watching Ultra Carbon. We could just meet in the middle, right? <laughs> oh man! Other than that, I haven't been doing much of anything, man. Just trying to survive this 2020. This year has been the, everything outside of me has been kind of nutty, dude. But everything inside has been. Cool, been pretty cool. It's, it's kind of like a hot pocket that's hot on the outside but cool in the middle when you don't warm it up right. That's kind of how things have been. But, <laughs> okay. uh, you know what I'm saying? It's a weird analogy. I'm a nerd. Uh, let's do the polls. Polls, polls, yeah, polls. Let me, let me play the music. Oh, we got music now. Let's do it. <laughs> That was a, about a octave too high, but I still love you and respect you. When you... I didn't practice. That's okay. <laughs> Neither did I. Um, this poll is not for winter. <laughs> this poll does not belong to Winter Trash Month the Third because I simply asked the Nerdiverse who's the best Saiyan in Dragon Ball because I was watching Dragon Ball this weekend. I was watching uh, the Brawly movie because I like torturing myself and I thought about who's... I just was curious to see who the Nerdiverse would pick as the, their favorite Saiyan. And I don't know. I think 
I think Twitter is like destroying our algorithm because we're not getting as many votes as we normally do. It's people bothering don't, me. People are voted out. It's Super Tuesday. It's Fat right. Cat Tuesday. Fat Cat Fat Cat Tuesday. Do do do. Oh geez, we're going back to uh to to uh what's his name? Back when we were young. Back when we were young. So I gave the the top four sayings. I just figured let's just do it, right? Like Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Trunks. And I'm so irritated because Go- Vegeta, Gohan, and Trunks all tied at 17%. 17 per- how, how how many choices do we have? <laughs> Four. And Goku won at 50% of the votes. 17 times. I don't have the percentages winner. It's broken down by percentage. Okay. Which you, did, which you didn't give me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just it's, saying. It's not my fault. The I'm not saying. I'm was not out of tune. Hey, hey, hey. It's not my fault. Hey, hey. Simba. So, <laughs> why are you lying? Simba you... down. <laughs> Don't break the top now. Simba down. Why are you lying? Why are you Mufasa? Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Dude. You know All right. So let's is? go to the news. You know what time it is? It's five thirty. You know what time it is? <laughs> time is what time is it? It's the time for the deuce. Time. Oh man! I thought for a second you were doing Master Exploder, and I was about to go right uh, there with you. I do not need. I do not need. Wait, wait. Let's a figure this microphone. out. Microphone. That's how it goes. <laughs> here we go, here we go. I do not. <laughs> I, every time I stop. <laughs> Fuck. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. Moment pass, moment pass. Can this be a new bit that we do? Kind of. If you, if okay. you keep those guitar stylings, we'll fit it in. <laughs> if that I was have the fun. guitar near me. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah. We have to do just random shit. Uh, <laughs> it's just gonna blow out the eardrums for a few. For everyone listening, yeah. by listenership, I'm I'll sorry. Work I might bring a harmonica next week. I don't know. Oh, so I like harmonica too. Yeah. Or the jug. I can play the jug. It's a coffee cup I have. <laughs> the, the cup. I could play the cup. So you want to hear something weird? Winner? Yeah. Want to hear something weird? Uh, remember we talked to we've talked to her blue in the face about how horrible Konami is, and how they screwed over Hideki Kojima to the point where he had to leave the company in in shame and start his own thing, Kojima yeah. Productions. Yeah. And we thought that they would never the the two shall never meet again, and you know stricken from every book and tablet and all that fun stuff. Stricken from the record. You are stricken. So, uh, uh, Hideki Kamiya put out the, the weirdest tweet, which is a hint that he may be working on this. He st- he'll, he may come back to work on the on the Silent Hill game with Konami. What? <laughs> like, okay, here's the tweet. So, there's a picture of one of um one of his production managers working on some information, and he says. Sorry to be silent, everyone. I've been really busy lately. I think I can say more about soon uh, what we're going to dot, dot, dot. And everyone's like, what, what is this? Like, is this some kind of weird? And there's like a lot of weird things in the shot, like shots of pyramids and weird stuff like in the image of the picture. It is like, is Kojima hinting that he may go back to do Silent Hills? What, do we want that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like at this point, like I don't know if I do. Like I don't know. It's the I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Like, what, do you have any dog in this fight, winner? By any chance? No, I don't. For a hill that's silent, it's not that silent. <sighs> What's the deal, Silent Hill? The deal? They don't. They're not silent. They speak. It shouldn't be called speaking hills. Order of best Silent Hill games go. I don't. I haven't played any of them. Just name one game and I'll consider it complete. Silent Hill for 
The uh, room? Okay. Blasphemy. <laughs> Whatever. You were instantly wrong, Doug. <laughs> How did you do this? How did you master the skill of wrong? Uh, you do, you, me. <laughs> do you want to play a game where every time you change your character's hair color, you have to pay for it? No. So you're playing... Let's say you're playing uh, Rocket Mike, League. I want to move away from this conversation. <laughs> yeah, we're moving away. We're moving away, man. I got uh, brisket in the oven. <laughs> you and your brisket can hold the, your biscuits bars. So, Dead or Alive 6, <laughs> which it caused... Def Jam Records with that. Man, I, I'll get signed, bro. Uh, <laughs> Dead, I'll be signed known Signed as... at the 5150. <laughs> hey, there's a thin line between uh, intel- uh, brilliance and madness, my man. Are you the line. Joker? <laughs> Get out of here. Between mad and smart, uh, Dead or Alive Six. All the apparently that's that's the game where all the downloadable content comes to like two thousand dollars or something stupid like that. Uh, they are not they're not tired of outdoing themselves, and now are charging people money each time they want to change the hair of their of their fighting game character. Is this the best or worst of microtransactions? Winner, your thoughts. Uh, well, we have as someone who has been on the on the kind of like the supporting side of the pool for microtransactions. This is definitely the uh, the dookie side of the <laughs> the dookie side of the microtransaction that side. Boo boo side. Like that's the side where everyone goes to pee a little bit. Yeah, okay. they squirt a little bit, not all the way. This is the shark connection. Yeah, just to prove to ourselves that we can hold it. You can uh, hold it, no matter how drunk you are. Okay, uh, so I I would say that this is a bad use of microtransaction, and people shouldn't support it. Um, go. There's plenty of other games that you can support their microtransactions. One hundred percent. Sorry, guys. Dead or Alive Six is actually a legit fighting game, but the way these guys are approaching it is like Winner said: the Dukes. They cannot support one game. I may be able to support. And I'm curious to see your opinions on this winner. Is Riot? Riot Games is are putting out a new um, shooter named Valorant. Yeah, looks, looks kind of interesting. Yeah, apparently there's something going on with Riot where in the last five or six months they've been releasing games. Um, <laughs> right, right. Where it used to be just League of Legends, and then it went uh, Team Fight Tactics, which is like a a game within the League of Legends. Then there's Legends of Runeterra, which is in the universe. And it looks like uh, this next shooter is going to be another game to right. to take us through. And it's not titled League of Legends. And it'll take us to the summer 2020. Are you looking forward to this by any chance? Oh, I'll play Being it. Being a PC free. guy? Yeah, yeah, I'll play it. Yeah, why not, right? Let Download me play with it. my controller. I just want to play with my setup. I don't want to use mouse and keyboard. Uh, speaking of playing, uh, this is the most winter article ever. So I put it on here because I thought of you, Winter Trash Month III. <laughs> Finally, Halo the Master Chief Collection is available on PC. Available now. All righty then. <laughs> How many copies of this have you bought yet, Winner? <laughs> None. Like six Actually, copies yet? I haven't played Halo in a while. <laughs> Dude, there was a point where you would not shut up about the Master Chief Collection. You're like, why is it not out I yet? I played it. I played it it's for a now. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I am Uh-oh. totally not used to the controls right Uh-oh. now. So I'm trying to get, I, I'm, I'm buying each game that comes out. But it's, <laughs> Honeymoon's uh, over, dude. But my, uh, my but my hands are just used to Call of Duty <laughs> controls. Yeah, that sucks. That super sucks. It's like going from Mortal Kombat yeah. to like Dragon Ball Z Fighters. It's like your brain it just needs to rewire to yeah. play that. You know, is is that bothersome to you? Like, man, this thing I've been wanting forever, and I play it. I'm just like, oh, this. Yeah, kinda, it was sad. Like, I'm probably sucks. gonna play story mode. Like, remove the Halo music and just have like death metal playing. Yeah, man. Put on some Dakin Doug. <laughs> Uh, speaking of death, Death Stranding is getting a PC launch, June second. 
But what do, what did this mean? It includes Half Life content. I don't know. It's super weird. So is this is this the Half Life Three Death Stranding? Half Life Three Death Stranding. Is there going to be like downloadable downloadable content tying the Death Stranding into the Half Life universe? Like, or is it just going to be stupid costumes and puppets and and stuff like that? I don't know. It's very curious. I wonder because you know Steam doesn't have to do um, Gearbox. Um, what is it? Valve. Valve doesn't have to really do anything. Which is why we haven't gotten a Half Life Three yet. You know they don't have to spend money on right. that anymore because they're making like hand over fist with Steam. So them loaning out the Half Life kind of property to people is kind of interesting to me. You know what I mean? If they're well, not going to do it do now, well, you know, me being uh, a nerd. A a nerd celebrity in in uh, Los Angeles. The, the cops are always looking for me to ask me questions like, "Dude, how is your hair so radical?" And I have to answer it. You know. Speaking of things that are radical, apparently some dinosaur DNA was found remarkably preserved in seventy five million year old fossil. Are you ready for Jurassic Park? <laughs> <laughs> first i want to see the sheep dinosaur that they make out of it. first they're going to tr- try to clone a sheep off of this or like Dude. try to use it sh- like we can clone a sheep dinosaur sheepasaur we're finally going to get carnosaur fried chicken dinosaurs boys <laughs> let's go live action dinosaur the dinosaurs the dinosaur roseanne Barr. she is a dinosaur um okay you know, she literally, like, lives right by my job, and I just see her walking the streets sometimes. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> she, like, she, like, shambles like a zombie. I'm like, is that Roseanne? <laughs> Why are you walking? <laughs> Mrs. Barr! Mrs. Barr! Mrs. Barr! Mrs. Barr! Do you want a soda? She's like, yes! Is that your Roseanne voice? That's my best Roseanne. Okay. So, super cool news. For some reason, Marvel Comics is throwing Ultraman into that Marvel Universe. I have no idea why. It's uh, American it's, wrestling, uh, it's, pro wrestling tactics. <laughs> it's so stupid. Why is Ultraman in the MC in, in the Marvel Universe now? Makes no he sense. He couldn't survive as his own franchise, so now he needs to join in. <laughs> he had to leave his home planet. Needed him. Americans, Ultraman, ma- Americans are not ready for Japanese. Co- <laughs> they're not ready for it. First, the thing is, is one Ultraman rules. Ultraman yeah. was real cool as a kid. So I like I love his design. He's such a clean um uh tokusatsu kind of like you know sentai design. And it just and he's this is a character that's just like Godzilla sized. So it's not like he's going to team up with the Avengers or anything. So I'm like where is he going to fit, dude? It's yeah. So dub, I love it. Um there are other things we could talk about the biggest explosion in the universe was detected. I was going to make a fart no. joke. Yeah. No. Tony Stark's dad is Mephisto. It's super stupid. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, did you ever read Why the Last Man? Winner? Uh, no. <laughs> it's a really good book, actually. It's a really good graphic novel. Yeah, I would. I would probably read it. It's. I've heard of it before. I know it's got a monkey in it, so I'm ready. Yeah, for the it. monkey's name is Apersan, and he rules. Okay. Yeah, it's about a. It's about the last man on Earth because a virus destroys all the male. Is it because his species. tail, the mutant tail, that looks like an ampersand? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's actually the correct answer. Really? Yeah. Don't lie to me. Read the book and find out. <laughs> I'm just going to look it up and then <laughs> I'm going to call you a liar. The laziness. While Winter looks up things on the podcast, I'm going to talk about how um, Chris Brenner is going to write a ampersand monkey movie. tail. <laughs> ampersand monkey tail. Monkey cheese. A uh, mask is being made into a film. That is the worst idea ever, dude. You don't even know what mask is, do you? No. I'll forget the acronym, but it's a cheap GI Joe knockoff where cars turn into other cars. <laughs> His tail is not an ampersand. Who says? I'm looking at pictures of him. That's that's our artist illustration. You have to you have to look at the actual interior art of the graphic novel, my man. I'm looking at it. It just curves once. That's curved into an ampersand. You don't know what an ampersand looks like. <laughs> I kind of don't. I kind of don't. It looks like a figure eight. Oh yeah, it does that like three or four times in the comic. Okay, moving on. Moving on. 
Uh, Day of the Dead is getting its own series on sci-fi. Ten episodes. Are do does, does the American public still care about zombies? Uh, sure. <laughs> do you still care about zombies, Winner? If it's Day of the Dead, yeah. George R. Romero, man. But Romero's not doing it, my man. <laughs> well, get one of his sons, John Romero. or His sons... Is our accountants and they don't oh. care about the the art, man. Well, get get a fan. Like if I can finish Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time without Robert Jordan actually finishing it, writing it, then I can I can enjoy Day of the Dead. Enjoy Day of the Dead in the comfort of your own home. Just don't moment. make it like the first thing a zombie said, like I love you. No, what was that one zombie uh, romance movie? Uh, dead warm bodies. Warm bodies, bruh. Oh, yeah, let's let's hurry up with the Star Wars news. Guess what? We're gonna talk about this for a second. So there's been a lot of stupid stuff coming out about Rise of the Skywalker, the novelization, that's saying dumb stuff. It's just dumb. Uh, apparently, uh, Emperor Palpatine in the film was just a clone and not the original Emperor Palpatine that fell down the energy shaft at the end of Return, and it's like. Why not? It's like... Why not? It's like... Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor K. Uh, why not just include that in the movie? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. I bet they ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, I haven't seen Rise of the Skywalker yet, but I know everything about it. Just yeah. through osmosis, and I don't care to watch it. Like it should have been something added in the last one, the last Jedi. <laughs> we could talk about how the last Jedi just kind of royally screwed over the, no, the course. No, we don't. Everyone's talked about it already. It, so. we talk, that's what I'm saying. It's something that we've talked about to we're blue in the face. Yeah, man. But we're not that type of newscast. We're not that type of newscast. That being said, this is dumb. And like, you know how we decided to do the news. How do we decide we just, to do the news? We just did it. You know what? Insane. We just do it. That's episode. One. Oh, you actually, you probably just did. You're probably <laughs> quoted, right? It's episode one of news newsroom. Okay. Finn. Finn. You know what? Actually, Finn. What are you looking forward to, Winner? Uh, he, uh, he. <laughs> he haw You going to watch some no. he no, I, I'm looking forward to a weekend of relaxing. Uh, Thursday, I'm getting some work done on my car. I'm going to put 400 bucks in it. And, uh, you know, uh, having a good old time. Yeah, i got to do some car stuff myself, my man. Looking forward to getting a fresh haircut. Um, looking forward to dinner because I am starving. <laughs> and uh, looking Starving. Forward to starving like Marvin. I want to see The Invisible Man. I heard that's super good um, with the, the Lee Winnell. We you don't want to say it too loud because what will happen is like, well, we're doing the universal monsters <laughs> universe. <again."> yeah. <laughs> that's the scary thing, right? You can't have anything. You can't have anything. You have one thing that's good. And then some, <laughs> some studio exec, this is all the right. birth of the universal dark universe all over again. And that's the last thing Lee Winnell wanted to do, man. <laughs> It's like, no, man. Just let me make my movie. Just let me make my movie. Oh, that's the next thing you know, it's going to be like Frankenstein, but with the eye is going to be like a one. <laughs> and, yeah. the, and the E is going to be like a, a three. It's going to be like an AI Frankenstein. I just gave I, I just gave someone an idea. Damn it. This is what happens when I talk. Uh, <laughs> do you have any last thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Yeah, check me out on Trash Monk the Third on your favorite social media apps, and I am writing, I am doing stuff, I am live and well in the great USA. Back to you. Born in the USA. Um, absolutely. So if you like this uh, good old podcast, Muzak slash Infograms, definitely support us on Patreon. That's Patreon forward slash MLTN. Don't hit it, winner. Toss the coin to your masters, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh, oh. I'm surprised you didn't break out the guitar, Doug. Rock the vote. Rock the vote. <laughs> it's the... been one week. One, 
Or I don't know how to say your prayers. Or... A tiny chicken. Uh, no, get me started on that. Uh, but if you want to support us non monetarily, you can always like our content, subscribe to our channels, and comment on our episodes. Um, good, bad, even sad, all forms of feedback is needed. We want to know how we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, I would like to say hello and to welcome you to the Nerdiverse. I've, of course, been your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Trash Monk the Third Winter. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond.